Hey college football fans, it's episode 31 of Walk It Off with Chappie, a little up north edition on vacation, but never on vacation from college football. And today, as a teacher and as a father, I don't normally like the what if game, but I'm going to play it with all of you. And my first what if of the college football season is what if the Notre Dame Fighting Irish go into Columbus, Ohio, into the horseshoe and knock off what looks to be the number two ranked Ohio State Buckeyes in the first game of the season. Now, go with me on this one. Let's just think about it. Let's weigh the possibilities. Ohio State ended their season with a triumphant victory over Utah, a good Utah team, in the Rose Bowl. And they just lit it up. C.J. Stroud over 500 yards passing. Jackson Smith and Jigba over 300 yards receiving. Then you got Notre Dame, who ended their season with a bad, nasty taste in their mouth after blowing a three-score lead against Oklahoma State in their bowl game and ended up in a losing effort in Marcus Freeman's debut as a coach. Now, speaking of Freeman, he is a defensive-minded head coach, and he brought on a pretty good D coordinator, Al Golden, who is fresh off a Super Bowl appearance with the Cincinnati Bengals as their DC, and he comes from a very good pedigree playing at Penn State, being around some talented coaches, and he's also been doing things in those uh, aspects of his own right. Now, Notre Dame's defense is going to be better than expected, and we know that Ohio State's got that high-powered offense with Stroud and Travion Henderson at running back and JSN, in addition to all the wealth of talent at receiver, but Notre Dame's defense can create some havoc, and it starts up front. Defensive end Isaiah Foskey had 11 sacks a year ago. He causes a lot of problems in opposing backfields, not to mention the addition of the Adam Alola brothers, Justin and Jason. Um, they could be tying up that talented offensive line for the Buckeyes just enough to enable their athletic linebackers like Jack Kaiser and Maris Leifau, not to mention one of the most underrated linebackers in the country, J.D. Bertrand, who led the Irish in tackles a season ago, and Bo Bauer, let's throw him in there as well. All four of those guys could be open enough to wrangle Henderson and try and limit that OSU run game. Now, in terms of the passing game, that's where everybody's expecting the Buckeyes to butter their bread this year. But you look at the Notre Dame secondary, they bring back their top two corners, Cam Hart and Clarence Lewis. Hart, I think, in my opinion, can be an All-American. Lewis is talented in his own right. And speaking of All-Americans, they add in Northwestern transfer free safety, Brandon Joseph, who is not quite Kyle Hamilton, but I think it's about as smooth a transition as you could get. Um, those two players are very comparable. So you, you bring that in in addition to their interception leader from a year ago, DJ Brown at safety, and converted wide receiver Xavier Watts, who was just too physical, too athletic of a talent to not have playing on the offensive side of the ball. Coaches really like what he might be able to bring in that secondary. So you look at uh, Notre Dame, and after that Labor Day weekend matchup with the Buckeyes, Beyond that, their schedule sets up pretty favorable to where they should be undefeated if they beat Ohio State going into the November 5th home matchup against Clemson, a rematch from a couple years ago in 2020, that famed historic upset. Um, and then they play at the Coliseum and the uber-hyped USC Trojans on November 26th. So if Notre Dame wins two of those three matchups between the Buckeyes the Clemson Tigers and the USC Trojans, you can damn sure expect Notre Dame to be in that top four for the college football playoff. Sorry, there's a big truck coming by. And possibly, once again, in the mix for that final four for the national championship. Now, Ohio State, if they lose this game, if they lose this game, I'm not calling it, but if they lose this game to Notre Dame, it's not the end of the world, and we saw that last year when they stubbed their toe early against Oregon. They recovered nicely, and their schedule sets up pretty good. They do have um, two pretty tough foes from the West, Wisconsin and Iowa, but both are at home in Columbus. Uh, they travel to Michigan State. They travel to Happy Valley to play Penn State in what will most certainly be a whiteout game, and then they 
finish the year at home against Michigan, and you know that's the game that they're circling above anything and everything else. So it's not going to be doom and gloom. It's not going to be the end of the world if Ohio State trips up against what I think should be a pretty good Notre Dame team on September 3rd. But it still poses that question, what if? What are we going to think of these two teams if that transpires and goes down on September 3rd? What do you think? Don't hate. Appreciate. Let me know what you've got in that mind of yours. Hit it up in the comments. Thanks for watching. This is Chappie, and this is what I know.